Good morning. We rolling? Yep. Um, I read your stuff again this morning. I won't, you'll, you'll soon find out which one I read the last. It wasn't you, Mark. Uh, although I was tempted to read yours last, <laughs> but I do remember every everything. Um, the we're going to talk about the Hall of Shame, which. We have a couple of potential guys here for the Hall of Shame already. The Hall of Fame behind you and the influencers. Now, as they would say here in, in Britain, whilst I have not read books by everybody on this wall, they have influenced my life. Whereas the difference between me and Gunfuck or uh, Miles uh, or Dom or... Uh, for sure Marcus, Marcus can't even read, so it's not, not, that's not his problem, is that I don't need to read about something to assimilate it. I don't need a Google fuck it to assimilate it. Why? Rob, I know you were thinking why. Why? Because I trust my instincts, and you don't because you're cunts. You've been raised by cunts to be a cunt. And ergo, Therefore, hence, you are a cunt. You have no self-confidence in your ability to make a decision. Bavarian Bob over here, this is his eighth seminar, and I were discussing something I discussed with him 13 months ago. In Bangkok? Yeah. Bangkok. Now we're going to do it. 13 fucking months later. We're going to talk about how it took him 13 years to get here, but that's, that's another story. And, and the, I said it was a good idea then. In fact, I thought it was a great idea then. But now, remember desperation, inspiration? We only make decisions, changes for two reasons. Inspiration or desperation. Some of you are fooling yourself that you're not desperate. But you are. Nobody pays 20 grand, more or less, to come here and get the fuck knocked out of them. Because they're happy. When Rob and I met in Orlando, what, six months ago? Yes. Six months ago. And I told you last night at dinner, I like guys from the South because they were raised right, for the most part. For the most part. They respect, they have respect and all that other shit. And they don't wear t-shirts and they don't try to grip the ground with their fucking toes, you know, and walk like I told you about last night. But I told, you know, I told him, you know, what I, what I thought and I thought that, you know, he would benefit. I knew he'd benefit, but everybody that's watching on YouTube would benefit. Some would benefit a lot, some would benefit a little bit. So uh, the, uh, we're going to go through a few slides for YouTube to, to start the thing with. But I want, I, I, want, I want to start with, because it's been really not a life-changing experience for me, but uh, an absolute thousand percent validation of what I've thought and what I've taught for 21 years and what I've thought for 40 or 50 years about regret minimization. Uh, the founder of um, Amazon has uh, his 80-year regret minimization, and he says he makes decisions. Bezos, right? What's his name? Bezos. Bezos, excuse me. He makes decisions. If he's having trouble making a decision, he says, well, let me think. But I regret doing this when I'm 80 years old. It's like people say, what do you put on Facebook? If your grandmother wouldn't like seeing what you put on Facebook, and I haven't even gone through all your Facebooks because I'm not that interested, but s some of the people that are on that wall have got some of the most horrific things on Facebook you can ever imagine. Okay? Now, I don't mean child porn and stuff like that. That's horrific. But I mean stupid things. And if I was going to be in a joint venture with you, or I was going to do something with you, and I looked on Facebook, and I saw this, I'd say, forget it. Next. And they think it's... I don't know what they think. But back to regret minimization. As I said on uh, last night at dinner, uh, or just before dinner, I should say, uh, a very dear friend of mine died uh, on the 13th of September, I think it was, or the 8th of September. And she was brought back to life after nine jolts of the, of the, uh, the thing, they put, you know, a fibrillator, defibrillator, excuse me. And, um, and uh, I had never talked to anybody uh, about uh, this near-death experience, and she didn't see a light, and she didn't see that, and she wasn't on an out-of-body experience, and she was looking down, none of that. All she saw was dark, gray. So I told Mary, maybe you're not going to the good place. If there is one, maybe you're going to the other place. 
But I said, well, what did you think about? And, and I spent two or three hours talking to her about this because I was really fascinated. And she says, I was really, I had great regret because I dropped dead at my son's rehearsal dinner. Boom, right into the dessert. Okay. That's pretty, you know, horrific when you think about it. And, uh, but she's dead, right? And she said, I was pissed off and, and I regretted having ruined my son's wedding rehearsal and then ruining his wedding, which was the next day. She took that into death. I'm here to tell you that she, you have regrets today that if you die tonight, Mark, or Gunther, or whoever, you would regret that you didn't come here earlier or you'd regret something. My big regrets, my two big regrets, and some of you that know me and have uh, read my stuff more than others, my biggest regret is I treated my mom poorly I told her, here at the castle, you're not going to fucking die, you're not sick, you're not sick, stop that shit. 36 hours later, she's dead. Now, I carry that like a fucking castle on my back. The last few words that I told her, I'm screaming at her and using bad words. Second regret is that I'm a combat trained army officer that never saw fucking combat. Never! I carry that. I think of that every fucking day of my life. Every fucking day. What are your regrets? Mar Marcus, we know what yours are. Okay. Where's the... Uh... Uh... You always have to show me, but where's the chingus thing here? Wait, I'm something. No. Oh. Thank you. Not plugged in yet. Okay. And my coffee is. Just there. And yes, I am drinking bulletproof coffee, Dave. <laughs> <laughs> Cheers. Mmm, good. <laughs> and it does nothing. I had six cups yesterday. Didn't feel anything. At the. Um, Dave's uh, biohacking conference. I had seven cups the first day, eight cups the second day. So many cups the third day, I couldn't count. And, um, and I mean big cups. But I, uh, I'm, a, I'm a believer, so I'm, uh, you know, that's two cups in there. And I'll probably have six cups today. But, and the people thought I'd be levitating, you know. What do you drink, a half a cup? A cup. <laughs> A cup. Yeah, you like, you like that? Oh my god, wait a minute. Let me, let me show the people. <laughs> Bulletproof, Dave! It's not working. Where's the network? Right? If you just give it a few minutes, a few seconds time, it works itself. Yeah, it's uh, coming up. Um, the last night, you saw the movie. Okay, you saw uh, Steve, uh, who I've never met. While I have met Gates and some of the other luminaries we're going to talk about. What was a common theme, other than screaming, and he didn't use any bad words. What, did you, what, what, what was the takeaway of Balmer's talk? What? Passion. And remember how I said more than once yesterday, it looks like you guys just came from a funeral? Remember? You don't look much better today. <laughs> I hope you're more passionate when you're fucking somebody. You're making love or... I don't call it making love. I always say just fuck, you know? Let's fuck, honey. Oh, does that mean we're going to make love? No, just bend over and let's fuck. <laughs> yeah, I'm not, I, I'm not, I was never much for foreplay, but in the 60s, you didn't have to have... There was it. You know why everybody called everybody honey in the 60s, 70s? Because you were fucking so much, it's pre, it, it, there was AIDS, but nobody knew about it. It's pre, so you didn't know I have to learn anybody's name. Oh yeah, fuck, honey, honey, honey. <laughs> Did anybody still call him honey? It's kind of GC, isn't it? What? It's kind of GC, isn't it? Well, I guess, I don't know. I'm asking, is it on? Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you. Bavarian Bob did that, okay. Now, in, in theory, we're here because you're high-performance people. 
That's a quantum leap to begin with. <laughs> That's a fucking leap, you know. Uh, but we're going to give you the benefit of the doubt. And uh, everybody that, uh, that has a, the opportunity, uh, that has gone through the seminars, had the opportunity to be on the Hall of Fame, and some have made it to the Hall of Shame. Okay? And we currently only have one person in the Hall of Shame doing hard uh, in prison or in jail. Uh, the, uh, but we've had one time, we've had four or five of those people have been in jail. And we'll talk about them as the week, eight days go by. Uh, and uh, because to be a high performance person doesn't mean that you're a goody two shoes. Hitler is an influencer for me. Stalin, Vlad the Impaler, those were high performance people, and they were bad guys, supposedly. Okay? Genghis Khan, a whole bunch of people up there are, you know, are considered in the scheme of things, in the cosmos of time, as having done bad things. But they're still high performance. They're still high performance. But you think of high performance in a different way. And by the end of the, this week that we're here, you will have a different definition of high performance. And high performance has almost nothing to do with anything except getting results. Getting results now, as soon as humanly possible. So, but we're going to give you the benefit of the doubt that you're high performance. <laughs> Shalom, Vigates, hey dude, uh, salute. Fuck you, you cunt, if you're from Glasgow. <laughs> I'm, saying, I'm saying good morning to everybody. This is one small step for man and a quantum leap for mankind. Many are called, but few are chosen. I am the $50 billion man. And the reason why nobody else talks about how much wealth they created, even you can figure it out, Mark, because they haven't created any. They haven't created any for you YouTube fuckers. I'm the only guy that talks about it. And it's considered rude. It's considered politically incorrect. It's considered whatever you else want to call it. And for many, many years, I didn't talk about it. I didn't just all of a sudden create $50 billion. But I think I told you the story last night. In 1997, I was at the Harvard Club in, in uh, New York City. <clears throat> I'd been there in 1993, and the guys asked me, well, how have you done in the last four years since you talked to us last? And I looked around the audience, and I said, well, several of you know, just the guys in this room I've created about 100 million bucks with. And they, th they were so taken back. It was, it, 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 they were aghast that I would, I, one, I would mention it. I didn't call them by name. One, I would mention it, and two, that I kept track. But the truth of the matter is the cunts told me. How would I know unless they told me? But that's the last time in 1997 I talked about how much money I created through my mentees and devotees, as they say. And I didn't bring it up again until about 2011. And by that time, I had some, a lot, a lot of money that had been created, and i.e., the first time I posted it was 34 billion and I'm counting and making e calls and emails and tweets and then I got up to 50 and I'm actually up to a lot more than 50 but two thirds of my successes don't want to be on that wall. They want anonymity and I give them that. That's fine. That's only about a third. But there's some you know, guys that have created a lot of money on that wall. You know, if you call 20, 25 billion a lot of money. And Zuckerberg money maybe is nothing. It's chump change. In the new media, it's chump change. But for the rest of it, it's a lot of money. And a lot of guys on that wall created it non-internet. And I, you'll hear me talk about the things that I've done pre-net or without internet. I've only made a couple hundred million bucks on internet schemes, as they say in this country. By the way, scheme is not a bad thing. Scheme is an okay thing in Britain. When I first got here, was a, I thought it meant scam. Um, but I haven't had an exit, a big exit or anything. I'm still looking for an Instagram. I want somebody to buy me for a billion, you know, when it's worth probably 20 million or 10 million or 2 million or something. That hasn't happened yet. Maybe one of you guys are going to help me. Okay. Morpheus said in the Matrix, he is the one. Constantine Grasso said, President of the Shipping Lines, my former mentor, one of the shooters to come along in a long, long time. That was about 30 years ago. Um... There's a lot of smart guys out there coaching, gal, guys and gals, but the, there's a big difference in it. As he's pointed out a couple, three years ago, 
I've been involved in more than 700 transactions. I stopped counting at 700. I've been involved in uh, more than 75,000 business decisions, and I'm not talking about whether to buy pencils or paper or shit. And Robert, in his infinite wisdom, mm, let me think. I, I don't know how to say in German, but for the German guys, you can translate. Uh, let me think. Would I rather have somebody that read 700 books or done 700 deals? You tell me. The answer's pretty fucking simple, isn't it? And that's why some of the things that you've asked me in your paperwork, I already have the answers, and I could have saved you the money to come here. I could have wrote you a two-paragraph email and told you what to fucking do. But you wouldn't have done it. Because you would have done a motherfucking spreadsheet on it. And you would have had to have done a calculation. Well, maybe he's only right 95% of the time. What if he's wrong with me? And that's why you're here and you paid me the money to beat the fuck out of you for the next week. I used to think being a $400 million man was enough. I turned 800 bucks into 450 million. I thought that was enough, but it wasn't. I thought when I started coaching, naively, and I'm not naive, they would, I would have to queue them up and have security guards to protect me. How many guys do you know that turned 820 bucks into 450 million? None. Michael Dell told me uh, years ago, if you had been in the computer business, Dan, you would have been the first trillionaire on the planet. Because I did it in a down fucking market, and it only grew 55 million percent. 55 million percent. Now, non-internet. But that wasn't enough. People... They made the excuses, the same excuses you did. I can't do that. I'm not you. I'm not an alpha male. That's the new thing. I'm not an alpha male. I'm just a wee cunt. And they came up with all kinds of excuses. So I bagged that. Well, the $400 million man doesn't work. That dog don't hunt. This dog fucking hunts. Because you can't make excuses around $50 billion. You can't. Even old Rob is here. And now, the irony of all this is that I'll be 70 my next birthday. Now, how many more years am I going to do this? I don't know. Okay. I thought I was going to retire last year. I had a retirement seminar. Klaus Kleinfeld, my superstar mentee, CEO of Alcoa, came. And then I said, uh, and Sally kept telling me, my wife, you don't want to retire. What are you going to do then? And so then... Um, so I unretired before I retired at the retirement dinner. And I said, no, but I tried to retire three times. I tried to do what you thought you wanted to do three times. And all three times, I didn't like it. One time I stayed retired uh, 30 months, though. 30 months. I got down to low single-digit handicap. I was playing uh, Carnoustie in um, uh, St. Andrews four or five times a week. I had a, my own permanent caddy at both courses. I was playing up to 72 holes a day golf during the summer. I mean, but you can only play so much golf, you know, and I don't really have any athletic talent to get down to a, you know, a, a plus meaning subpar uh, uh, average. I was lucky to be down to a three or four. Uh, on these courses, that's saying something because it, I, I don't know what it would have been on a regular course. Uh, but um, <coughs> I tried it, but you can't argue with this. How do we get the fucking money is why most people come to me. They don't want all the bullshit. How do I get the fucking money? But we don't talk about this till the third day. Now why don't we? Because, like I said, if I wrote you an email with two, three paragraphs, I can really put it in one sentence. How you get the fucking money, you wouldn't do it. You wouldn't, it, as they say here. You wouldn't. It. Because you'd have to do a calculation, you'd have to, you'd have to do a spreadsheet. And in the old days, you used the uh, Lotus One Two Three. It. Are you old enough to remember Lotus One Two Three? Okay, yeah. Lotus One Two Three. I still talk about. It. I revert to that every once in a while by mistake because I still, you know, I didn't get online till April first, two thousand. It's the first time I ever got behind a computer. And I called Sally. I said, "What are you? <coughs> I'm reading the directions. I was on AOL. What is the mouse, Sally? I'm calling her." Dan, I'm doing a deal, I'm busy, blah, blah, blah. Then I call, my, I call my daughter. 
and Kelly says, Daddy, I'll help you when I get home. I didn't know what the fucking mountain, anyway, so that's the first time I turned on a computer. It was April 1st. April Fool's, ironically enough, uh, 2000. Um, but we're going to talk a lot about this, and we're going to do role playing. And, uh, and uh, one of the, 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 mo the guy I told you about that looks like he's going to break all my records, who was in the August seminar, he did what I told him to do. Go home and tape yourself. Do a selfie. I didn't know the word selfie at the time. Do a selfie with a, a camera, a uh, video, and see how fucking bad you are. Not good, bad. And he went there and he's improved, improved, and he's, you know, and he's made, he's done, he's put his dream team together, he's got accountants and big time lawyers that will do all this stuff on a success fee basis. Uh, his deal has now grown from 500 million to a billion. Uh, and he says, what the fuck? And he's kind of overwhelmed. Uh, he doesn't say that, because uh, he knows I don't want to hear that. What are you, a cunt? What do you mean you're overwhelmed? <laughs> I'm not interested in being over, you know. All I want to know is you're doing all this shit like I told you to. Um, so we'll talk plenty about that. Okay. Now, I, I was looking up some figures about well, how to get the fucking money. I went back to 1999, and I just picked these out randomly. These aren't my t best cases. We took a guy, he had, it was in, in uh, June or July, he was doing 77K a month, thousand dollars, oh no, pounds, that's pounds, pounds in tr uh, turnover. In December, he did 477. In 2014, this year, a guy in the January seminar, January seminar, who's an MD, an MD doctor, who doesn't practice medicine, went from 85 to 465 in seven months. That's what you're all interested in. How, uh, if you're not interested, how do I get the fucking money to grow? See, if the bank gave you all the money you needed, you wouldn't know what the fuck to do with it. That's why we don't talk about that. What you're really interested in, your little chicken shit business that you got now, how do I increase revenue? How do I increase turnover? But the real question should be, how do I keep a big, healthy bottom line. That's why I like businesses that have 20, 30, 40, 50% margins because you're shitty managers, you don't know how to manage. And some of you are in businesses, Marcus, with a two or 3% fucking margin. You gotta be smart. No wonder he's in trouble. You gotta be smart to manage a retail type business. That's why I stay away from retail. I also stay away from manufacturing. Manufacturing is hard. But that's what you really wanna know. <clears throat> And these are just too random. You know the, the guy from January. In fact, you know the guy from January as well. And the guy uh, from uh, 99. Now, arguably, this is more money from $99 than 2014 dollars. But, notwithstanding you want to know how to get the fucking money, and you want the, uh, your revenue to go up and your margins to go up, when I, use it, when I talk about the richest 85 people on the planet, have more money than 3.5 billion on the planet, about half the planet. So 85 people have more wealth than half the uh, population. You consider that dirty. You consider that, uh, you know, you don't, you, uh, what are the, I don't want to make them have nots, you know. And we, we have a whole section on why subconsciously your parents gave you bad information about being wealthy and creating wealth. See, you don't want that. You want the money, but you don't want to take it from anybody. I don't give a fuck. As long as you don't kill them, I think it's okay. As long as it's moral, ethical, legal, and I've added in my recent years, not hurt too many people. I don't say don't hurt anybody. Don't hurt too many. Life without change is death. You live in a bubble, bubble-wrapped life. All of you do. Afraid to break out of your own routine, you'd rather continue to sleepwalk through life. Many of you have been in a coma a long time, you just don't know it. Maybe for those of you who have been married a long time, their wives know you're in a coma because, you know, you know what I mean? Yeah. I still remember when in India a few years ago, and a really attractive woman, about 50 years old, we're getting into a buggy to take a tour around, I forget where we were, and her husband 
helped her up into the buggy, the a coach or whatever you call it, by pushing her bum, her, her buttocks. And when she sat down, and so Sally and I are sitting in this side, and they had the better view because they're looking at where we're going. And then she turned to him and said, that's uh, something to the effect, that's the most sex I've had out of you in five years. <laughs> oh. <laughs> and I, pre I pretend, Sally being English, pretended she didn't hear, you know, and I just went, <laughs> you know, she's a good looking woman, good looking woman. Uh, but uh, that's the, um, no man or woman is born average. Some of you people have lived average lives in here. But you're not born that way, are you? How many have kids? Okay. Don't get excited. How many have kids? Two, three, four, five. They believe in Santa Claus. They jump around. They're smiling. You, know, you, know, you used to be like that, Mark. Now look at you. You piece of shite. I mean, we're going to talk about why that happens. And at the, at, the, at the end of the day, for those that are looking at it, the parents fuck you up in case we don't have film it during the, the film time for YouTube. Your parents fucked you up. You're here because of your parents. You have all the fears of mortals and all the desires of immortals. You want to be this, you want to be that, but you got the fear of a mortal. This is we're going to be some homework. This is uh, from um, uh, an August, no, this is an August seminar attendee. I'm breaking the uh, contentment habit and I'm struggling with it. This is why I signed up for QLA, to break, uh, to break this problem, to get back the good habits I once had, to ditch my dead weight friends and family. I know this is going to crush you. If you never talk to your family again, and you never talk to all the guys that you and gals that you consider friends today, ever again, in the cosmos of time, it would not be a fart in the wind. Uh, I want to build a business I can be proud of, not for anyone else but me. I'm fucked up and I know it, but I'm doing things now I have never considered before, thanks to QLA, which is a good, but not good enough. I will keep pushing myself through these in internal barriers which are holding me back. I must do it. I have to break free. This is a guy that's just been up uh, eight weeks. Um, the, in short, you can, you can take the whole 1,500 PowerPoint slides, and this one is really the summary of it. Mm -hmm. You take a once world-class athlete like Marcus. He's just a whole bag of fucking bones now at 31, but he, he once used to be something. <coughs> he once was, okay? Manford, his old coach, um, he was on the Austrian ski team, yada, yada, yada. Uh, arguably the best ski team. I don't know if that's true. The Swiss might not agree with that, but anyway. And the former Olympians, world-class athletes that come through here, understand this better, because they understand focus and commitment. But all these guys that want to hold the goal to say at the Olympics have a blueprint, a plan, a war plan that you're going to get. But what they have and you don't have is a champion's mindset. We're going to develop that in the next week. And part of that champion's mindset is, you know, you show me your friends and I'll show you your future. And last, in fighting, it's a corner man, mentor, master. They have somebody that has been there and done that. You now can never say, I didn't know what to do. Come a week from now when you leave, you can never say, I don't know what, you may not decide to do it. And I may, you may get thrown out of the mentor program because the mentor program is free, so I can throw you out anytime I want. And, uh, but you can't say you don't know how to do it anymore. Some of you are emotionally equipped to do what's necessary. Some of you aren't. You took a, a, an emotional big step just coming here. Some of you took a bigger step than others. Some of you that have been here multiple times, like uh, Robert and Marcus, uh, paying attendees for eight and six times respectively are here because you know the shit works. The shit works. And uh, a good, uh, you know, uh, half of you or more are here because you heard of me for the first time on London Real and the founder of uh, London Real and the presenter um, who I'm uh, appreciative of is sitting in the audience. 
um, Brian Rose sitting here for the whole week. And um, the, um, but you're going to have the tools. And some of the tools are going to be so, oh yeah, I knew that. But there's a difference between knowing it and doing it. And that difference is, is your emotional bank account. Now, you want to know the difference between a master and a beginner? The master has failed more times than the beginner has tried. <laughs> I have got, everybody talks about the five or six or eight deals that I've done that are, you know, pretty infamous. Turning $60,000 into $65 million in 100 days and 800 bucks into $450 million in a down market in eight years. And there's a, a number of others. But I could write a book a hundred times thicker than your first hundred million about all my failures. I got a gazillion of them. You know, this year I probably failed at uh, 15, 20 pounds. 15, 20. But I keep swinging at the bat, or at the plate, excuse me. Because you can't knock it for six, like in cricket terms, or hit a, a home run unless you swing. And I just, I, I just keep, I don't even think about it. I just, you know, I just keep swinging. And for those that are on both the Hall of Shame and the Hall of Fame, would, if you were asked, if you ask them, what's the difference, the big difference, is that Dan told us, taught us, coached us, kicked us uh, to believe that um, failure is good. But as they supposedly say in Silicon Valley, fail fast. <clears throat> Some people don't fail so fast. I fail fast. I mean, if the fucker doesn't work, next. And I'm, when I'm involved in the internet deal, if the traffic and the clicks and the impressions aren't there, convert, next. I don't, sit around, I don't sit around and finger fuck with the fucking uh, landing page and yeah. That's all horse shit. If the motherfucking concept doesn't work to begin with, it's dead. Finito in my mind. But you guys probably still finger fucking with websites and landing pages fucking a year or two, five years later. Because emotionally, as I've said, pride of authorship has killed more deals than Hitler killed Jews during World War II. Pride of authorship. And what is pride of authorship all about? Obviously pride. Your emotional bank account. Because you really don't have much of an emotional bank account, so you hang on. You hang on too long. And you can't say, well, fuck, I wasted three years and, two, you know, X amount of dollars. Most of you, get this, and the YouTubers have wasted, wasted your whole motherfucking lives. I used to come out and put a gun out here. With one bullet in it. <laughs> but now you can't have bullets. This is in the 90s. You can't have bullets anymore. I, don't, I can't do that. One. And I'd say, it's all right. Just, you know, do it outside so you don't fuck up the, the walls. <laughs> <laughs> do it outside. I like that picture. Is that you? <laughs> yeah, you fucking idiot's me. But not me. <laughs> okay. This is another, uh, this is an uh, August seminar guy. Um, the, um, follow, uh, following on your positive email, I sent out an email showing this, uh, that somebody was doing a lot of good things. So then I got an email back, and this is the guy that's breaking my records. He was real quiet, didn't say anything. But then he says, following uh, on your uh, positive email below, today was my first meeting with a law firm, a big law firm. Uh, went very well. They agreed to bring partners from Sydney and Singapore, agreed to delay my first uh, three months of billing, and then quarterly, I think I can uh, get them to do six months delay, meaning they don't charge you for six months while you're doing the deal. And everybody says, that's impossible, you can't do that anymore, but you can. Um, the, uh, they also offered to introduce me to two major local investors. They, uh, they work with, uh, to, uh, to think they may be interested in my uh, investing in my deal. They had some initial suggested changes to my proposed structure that makes a lot of sense. They also agreed to refer acquisition targets in the future. When this comes online, uh, I told them that I'm meeting with uh, Baker and McKenzie, which is a big law firm, 
and one or two others, uh, because what you're going to learn is when you go to see these guys, you're interviewing them. They're not interviewing you. So you're a Class A law firm, but you're only one of the four or five big law firms that I'm going to see. Uh, and um, it, well, the system works like clockwork. Thank you for your support. I'm, I'm getting um, I'm getting really excited about this huge potential um, that I'm putting in place. It amazes me. This sounds like you, uh, Marcus. It amazes me how simple yet effective your approach is. The operative word for you, uh, uh, Dumkoffs, is the simple. The simple. And remember, I started this process because I had no money. Some of you got a few bucks. That makes it easier. That make, it, can, it can make it easier. Um, and when I go back to the mentees from the August seminar. When I see in the eyes of those that come to see me uh, as a mentor, I often see uh, fear caused by former defeats. When I subsequently see the, 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 the look on their faces after their first success in building their dream team by finding a mentor or getting lawyers and accountant firms to accept their, their projects and dreams on a success basis or creating deal flow, I know why I became a coach. Victory belongs to those who believe it the longest and believe it the fucking most. But time is vicious when you take time for granted. I'm going to have my foot up your ass. For those of you that are young, oh, they'll say, you got all the time in the world. That's bullshit. Because then you're going to wake up and you'll be 30 someday. And you'll be an old fuck. I came at 31, and then you're going to be 40. I've always been in a hurry. Always. And the high performance people that we're going to talk about have always been in a hurry. Not asleep like you lazy cunts. Because you're thinking 10% return is good, I'm thinking 10 times or 100 times return is good. It's a paradigm shift, to use a, you know, an overused term. I heard somebody talking about, uh, well, he's got 100 grand invested now. Like that was a lot of money. I, feel, I think they might have, 100 grand, well, it's not a lot of money. It's like somebody, one of the London Reelers who's not here wrote me, uh, you know, he's a poor guy, da 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 and he said, I have $200 in my wallet now, and I'm feeling flush. And uh, he says, I bet you have a watch worth $200. He's telling me. <laughs> <laughs> this is the, the minority of the London Reelers. See, I think there's a whole bunch of them like that. But uh, two, you know, I'm trying to think. The last time I had a watch, it only cost two hundred dollars. I couldn't remember. <laughs> I couldn't remember. But uh, it was cute. But this is this is huge. If you, you know, if you just add two three zeros onto what you thought you wanted. People ask me, if you had to do it all do over again, what, what error did you make? I said, I didn't set my goals high enough. I set my goals for $2 billion. I came up $1.55 billion short. Nobody's crying for me, but what if I had set my goals for $20 billion? Success doesn't keep normal business hours. Now, this is this, we're going to end this on the YouTubers. Now, this is a chart I didn't put together. One of my crack marketing staff did. And uh, they said, have you ever taken a look at just how many hours you did work, Mr. Penny, or Sir Dan, as they call me in Asia, Sir Dan? No, I haven't. Now, this is me right there. 50 years of work at roughly 15 hours a day, seven days a week. Not counting the days I worked 24 hours straight, five, six days in a row when I was your age. And those against the days I only work five, six, seven hours when I'm on, on a cruise with my wife. This is everybody else that works like you, 40 hours a week, five days a week, two weeks off, two, only two weeks holiday off. I'm 131 years old, 131. I've got 60 additional years experience than somebody that's gonna almost be 70. And 20 years ago, I was probably I only had 40 years more experience. And we're going to talk about the hours and the work ethic of the, of the guys that you read about. The Gates and those guys. Not, I don't know, I can't speak for what he's doing now with uh, his foundation, but when he used to work uh, building Microsoft. But that's the difference. 
There's no comparison. There's no comparison. You guys probably are not even your chronological age. And that's sad. For those of you that are 40, you probably, they're cunts, like all of you, you, you they probably work four, five, three, four, five hours a day, and you're going to keep track of your hours on my weekly reports. And I'm going to see uh, how, and I, Monday is the same as Sunday to me, is the same as Thursday. And I'm going to, I see six hours, uh, no, uh, 10 hours, 10 hours, 10 hours, three hours, no hours. And I said, it must be the weekend. Must be the weekend. Okay, YouTubers, thank you.